Good morning. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Uh, today I am very excited to be recording this inside our sanctuary and we just uh, can see now the completed front area, the chancel area, uh, the wall uh, of the chancel area has been completed. Uh, for the most part, it's always a work in progress, right? Uh, but many thanks to Deborah Smith who designed this, Brian Morris, his friend Ron, Gavin Garcia, uh, I remember uh, Vicki Slocum was here with their daughters, Sky and Tara, putting some tiles on. I'm sure I know some others of you helped with tiling, and it looks great, thanks to all who did this. And what I love about this so much is that uh, Jesus Christ is at the middle. The, the cross is there reminding us of his work, what he did for us, and that he has risen from the dead and is now with us here in Cameron Park, and he's with every believer around the world. And that gives us hope during some really uh, difficult times. So uh, I want to share a devotion with you today. And when I'm done, I I'm going to change the lighting a little bit. Uh, right now I've got some of the lights on. We'll turn them off and we'll see how good the camera is at picking up uh, the backlighting of the cross while it's dark. It's beautiful to the, to the eye and hopefully the camera will be able to show that. So we're doing our, our devotions out of the book of Acts as we journey through the book of Acts together. And today we're in chapter 16. We're going to look at verse 25. Now, chapter 16 has a number of accounts in it, but one of them is when Paul and Silas were arrested and thrown into a prison in the town of Philippi or Philippi. And they were thrown into jail without cause. They were mistreated. They were beaten. Uh, the commentary I use for the book of Acts says, it was probably similar to something like a caning, where a cane is used to really strike and bruise somebody. Uh, so they, they, were, they were abused. How would you respond to that? Let's listen to the words of Acts 16, 25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. That's all I'm gonna read for today, just that one verse. What were they doing around midnight? Praying and singing hymns to God. Uh, and in fact, uh, their prayers were sung. You can translate it that way, that, that praying they sang hymns to God. And how powerful that is to see that the Holy Spirit gave Paul and Silas the strength they needed, that in the midst of their difficulties, their unfair treatment, and perhaps their fear of what might happen the next morning even, God led them to sing, to sing the scriptures. And what was happening? The other prisoners were listening to them. Good hymns take the scriptures and put them to music. A good Christian hymn will lead us into the scriptures and express it in poetic ways that help us to grasp the, the character of God, his, his mercy, his power, his, his wisdom, and, and so on. And in the midst of difficulties, they also help us to pray to God. I wonder if maybe some of the hymns that they were singing were actually psalms, uh, where uh, out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. We don't know, we're not told. But they were, they were praying, singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. How fitting it is this morning that I'm in our sanctuary, a place of worship, a place where usually we're able to sing hymns to God, and hopefully we'll be able to do that in the not too distant future. But how great it is uh, that God gives us his word and he gives us the gift of music where those two come together. A and a hymn takes the word of God and expresses it and we sing the words of God. In this day and age, other people hear that and it's a great blessing. In a certain sense, we're all prisoners, aren't we? We're all born in sin, the Bible says. Uh, we, we inherit that sin and then we commit sin, so we're prisoners to sin. And because we are sinful people, we're also, uh, in a way, we're prisoners to death. Nobody escapes death. Every single person dies. Thanks be to God that Jesus, the living word of God, the word made flesh, entered into this world and died for us on a cross and then rose from the dead. His resurrection broke the power of death. Yes, we still die, but our sins have been paid for, and our death is not final. We too will be raised from the dead, resurrected, 
as our Lord Jesus was when he returns. And that is a great joy. And we get to read that and meditate on it, and we get to sing that in our hymns. So I want to encourage you to, to sing the hymns of God. If you don't have a hymnal, uh, you can buy one from Concordia Publishing House. It's called Lutheran Service Book. And there are many hymns also available on YouTube, and that's helpful because you got the music right there and you can, you can sing with them. And what happens when we sing? Well, the other prisoners sometimes will listen. And by that I mean that when we sing and speak and live in the gospel, other people hear that. People who are prisoners to sin and death and Satan, and unlike us, don't know the freedom of Jesus Christ. And so as we gather here or in our homes and we, we read and we sing the words of God, that gives us hope and joy and that carries out into our lives so other people uh, can hear the word of God as well. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you have defeated death. You have brought death and sin to, to their knees in your death and resurrection. And we pray that you would help us to communicate that to a world that needs it so much. Thank you for this beautiful art in our sanctuary and may it always remind us of your death and resurrection for us and help us to communicate that to the world so that the other prisoners may be set free. Amen. All right, I'm going to pick up the camera and uh, give you a little tour, uh, turn, change the lighting a little bit and hopefully you enjoy as, as much as I am. Okay, so I'm gonna come back and you'll see now I've got some of the, or we've got construction stuff still out here. A little bit. So this is with all the lights on and what's kind of great about it is that even with the lights on, you can, you can see that the cross still, uh, the backlighting of the cross still is visible. And I'm not gonna explain this, first of all, because I didn't design it, but also because Good Christian art draws us in and helps us to think about what that means. And um, again, if you want to talk to somebody about it, you can talk to Deborah Smith. She designed it. Uh, she may be able to give you a good explanation on that. But I think it's going to really serve us well in worship throughout the years. So that's what it looks like in full lighting. And now I'm going to turn all the lights off. And I'll zoom back a little bit. Isn't that beautiful? And you can imagine on a uh, Advent or especially a Lent service in the evening to come in here and, and sit and just during the day or in the evening uh, if there are groups at church and we have an opportunity to just come and sit in the sanctuary for 20 minutes just to pray and meditate, how helpful that will be. So again, thanks to everyone who, who put this together and worked on it and uh, we are just so blessed by this and pray that for many years to come, people will rejoice in what God has done for us in Jesus and this art will help them to hear that message, to see that message. Have a great day in the Lord.